All right. Uh, hello, my name is Zach Wong, and today I'll be presenting uh, the Great Mosque of Genet. So the Great Mosque of Genet is among the wonders of Africa and is one of the most distinct religious buildings. Uh, the mosque is situated in Genet City and is considered one of the most prominent achievement work of the architecture by the Sudana Sahelian. Additionally, it boasts as the world's largest mud structure in the world. And in 1988, the UNESCO designated designated the mosque as the world heritage. Uh, for quick history, the construction of the mosque is estimated to date back to the 13th century around the 1200s. According to the Tariq al-Sudan, the mosque was built under the orders of Sultan Kun Kunburu, apologize for my, if I botched that, who had his place pulled down paving the way for its construction after becoming a Muslim. However, the construction was not completed under, under the Sultan. The towers were actually built by the sultan's immediate successor, and the next sultan constructed the surrounding wall. And then here's a picture of the uh, interior of the building. The mosque went into ruins around 1818 when Seku Amadou, a Fulani leader, overran and took the town, leaving the building in ruins. And by the 1890s, the mosque was ruined. Its interior was used as a cemetery. In 1906, the rebuilding of the mosque began under the French administration, with the reconstruction ending in 1907. The rebuilding was conducted using forced labor and overseen by the Guild of Masons in Genet. And now I'm going to be talking about the design of the building. So, the great mosque's walls are actually constructed using sand and earth mortar and sun-baked earth bricks. The walls are then plastered to give it a smooth and sculptured appearance. The walls are also plastered every year to maintain its appearance. And here's a picture of the bricks that they're using. And just to continue on with that, the mosque boasts monumental pillars that all support the earthen roof. So here's an image of the earthen wall floor supported by its pillars as seen in the three pillars at the far end. And then the second image shows the pillars from the exterior. Uh, next, the roof is characterized by holes covered using terracotta lids that allow fresh air in the mosque as seen in the image below. You can see there. And then the pillars are characterized by conical extensions at the top that symbolize fertility and purity of the region. The exterior, including the pillars, also have decorative and structural beams. The platform upon which the mosque is built is raised to limit damage during the flooding of the Bani River, as seen in the image. So it actually is lifted up using six sets of stairs. Uh, the Great Mosque is an important part of the Dijonese culture. Every year its maintenance is conducted in an annual festival that the entire community takes part in. The festival is characterized by by food and music, and the people are take part in mending the damaged parts and the plastering of the walls. The repairs are mainly done by boys and men, with the boys preparing the plaster and the men handling the smearing of the plaster all over the mosque. And here we got a picture of just every year they rebuild the great mosque of Genet. And uh, here are my sources.